decked out in, in Newcastle United colours, but it's almost, and it might just add a bit of needle to fire up Wigan in these early stages. Absolutely. From the perspectives of those season ticket holders at Wigan Athletic, sometimes philosophically it's nice to change the view of things. Here we go then. Manchester United will get us started playing from right to left as we look down. Bruno Fernandes inside the centre circle waits for the signal from the referee. This is five live sport for the BBC. FA Cup third round. This is the last of the third round games. Some replays we already know about. The draw for the fourth round has been made earlier on today. Will it be Wigan or will it be Manchester United whose name goes into it and just as we get started to reiterate no VAR here because it's not a Premier League ground we'll give you a full rundown of the teams in just a moment but Rafael Varane comes over the halfway line for Manchester United Garnacho, who's begun the game wide on the right hand side Rashford on the left and Johnny Evans who has played here as a Manchester United player back when Wigan were a Premier League club and here he is back at the DW again Sean Clare nips in on Rashford and makes a tackle and brings a big cheer from the Wigan supporters, the ball goes out of play for a throw-in on the halfway line. So Wigan Athletic nil, Manchester United nil. The home side start with Sam Tickle in goal, 21-year-old goalkeeper. This has been his first season playing in the FA Cup. He's been Wigan's first choice all campaign. The back four, Sean Clare, Charlie Hughes, Liam Morrison and Stephen Sessegnon, who's the twin brother of Ryan Sessegnon, the Tottenham player who made his comeback from injury on Friday in this competition. In midfield, a deco alongside Shaw, Liam Shaw, who's on loan from Celtic. Then there's Marshall Goro and Jordan Jones, either side of Thilo Asgard, who's got three goals in his last four FA Cup appearances for Wigan. And Stephen Humphreys back in the team tonight, leads the attack. He is Wigan's top scorer this season. Dallow playing at left back will roll the ball back to Onana, Andre Onana, who is still here. Cameroon, who've allowed him to stay until after the Tottenham game on Sunday. Cameroon then play Guinea the very following day at the African Cup of Nations. But if Eric Tenag wants to give a confidence boost to his goalkeeper Onana, who is being in the firing line, who's been in the spotlight all season, he's making it very clear that he really does want Onana to, to be involved as often as he possibly can. Absolutely, and with the fresh news of the takeover happening and the changes that are going to happen at Manchester United, Andre Onana will be a big part of that, and I can't help but think that like I said earlier, Manchester United will want to start the year on a high. That's why they've gone particularly strong this evening with the team. And Anana in goal is part of that. Garnacho steps in field, gives it back to Menu. Good closing down by Clear though. And it's going to be one back again for the home team. Here is it, Goddo. Little bit of pace towards the Manchester United penalty area. It's a great cross in. Chance for Asgard. Saved by Onana. What a brilliant delivery. Second cross comes into the penalty area low. And Andre Onana gets down to save. Well, that's an early laying down of the gauntlet by Wigan. First big chance of the game for the League One club, who are 54 league places below Manchester United. Has to score, Connor. Has to score. The ball over from Goddard was perfect. And Asgard, he just went for the cushioned finish. But that is exactly why Onana is in there. It was a brilliant save. But Kobe Maino just playing a square pass, giving Wigan an invitation to counter-attack Manchester United and really positive from only, Wigan. Only three minutes on the clock when they had that chance. The start that Sean Maloney would have dreamt of. Sean Maloney, the Wigan manager, a boyhood Manchester United fan. Growing up, when he lived in Aberdeen, he used to make 500-mile round trips to Old Trafford to watch Manchester United during the the 1990s and here he is up against them again today this time for the first time as a manager Johnny Evans brings the ball forward gives it to Rashford on the left hand side for Manchester United infield to Dallow who's got the gloves on on what is a cold night at the DW Stadium Evans has continued his run forward here he gives in a really good cross but Adiko is back there and able to head away from danger we can have him fully cleared Bruno Fernandes picks it up and back to Varane again near the centre circle, so in front of Onano, back four of Juan Bissaka, Varane, Evans and Dello. Mino alongside McTominay in the engine room in midfield, Garnacho wide right, Bruno Fernandes in the centre, Rashford on the left, and Rasmus Hoyland, who plays for the first time since scoring against Aston Villa to get that much-waited-for first Premier League goal for Manchester United. He missed the Nottingham Forest game last time due to illness. Here's Garnacho, 15-20 yards at the penalty area, right-hand side. Back to Menu near the centre circle. 
Manchester United dominating possession as Wigan would have expected here in the early stages of the game and Sean Maloney will have set the team up hoping that they can counter and catch out what has been very regularly a vulnerable Manchester United defence this season. Mano's the deepest lying of them at the moment and he gives it to Varane on the right-hand side. Nil-nil. Yeah, excellent shape so far from Wigan. Really disciplined, really organised. The test is, can they keep this up for the 90? It's a good launch by Asgard who had the glorious chance earlier on but he can't do anything with that Manchester United work it out to the left wing to Marcus Rashford he'll break into the penalty area low left foot across comes off Charlie Hughes and it deflects away from him Rashford spilled off the pitch he's a little bit slow to get back up to his feet I think he got a little knock there but nothing too serious and Marcus Rashford is now jogging back into position once again Liam Morrison rolls the ball back to tickle the goalkeeper and they're confident to play it out here it's a short pass to Sean Clare neat triangular passing it'll be very interesting is it to see how brave Wigan are at doing that as the evening continues because they've been penned in here that's an early indication Connor really composed from Wigan as the ball changed over they didn't go long they didn't hoof it down the channels they kept the ball and they know that they have a goalkeeper in Sam Tickle who can play and they look really confident so far Wigan last five times that Wigan have hosted a Premier League opponent here in the FA Cup they've only lost one of them they do have a knack since being relegated from being a top flight club themselves Wigan have had more giant killings against top flight opponents than any other team They've had a big chance here, they haven't taken it, and will Sean Maloney's team regret that as the evening continues? We've played six minutes, Mena was possession in the midfield for Manchester United, low to the feet of Hoyland, who hungrily comes looking forward, Morrison with them all the way though, and more Tigers tackling from Wigan on a breezy night, they put the pressure on, and Evans is forced to retreat back to the keeper. Again, excellent shape, excellent pressure from Wigan, they're just biding their time, picking the right moments to go and engage in that instance with Hoyland and just forcing him backwards. Really positive start from Wigan. If you missed the draw, the full details are on the BBC Sport website, but the headlines are that Tottenham will host the holders Manchester City in the fourth round. Chelsea will be up against Aston Villa at Stamford Bridge. League Two, Newport County or the national side, Eastleigh, will host the winner of this game, either Wigan or Manchester United. Rashford coming forward. Dallow did well to stay onside. Crosses him with the outside of his right foot. Got at you on the back post, tried to take it down, but Sessegnon got good and close to him and was able to clear the ball away and all the way back to Aaron Wan-Bissaka, still nil-nil. What a ball that is what from Dallow. He's finding himself actually quite high up the pitch. Manchester United dominating the ball as expected and Dallow's finding himself in a lot of spaces with a lot of time on the ball. He got Nacho, the ball falling to him at the back post, unable to, to get a chance, but... Manchester United just dominating. It's been a bright start here this Monday evening under the floodlights in Wigan. Uh, you can always tell the difference between a cup match and a, and a Premier League game. And I get paid to describe things, that's my job. Easy. I, I find it difficult to explain why it's it, but you instantly know this isn't a league game as Bruno Fernandes plays it into the penalty area and it's held onto by Tickle underneath his crossbar. In the same way as a player, you feel the occasion, you can feel or have these feelings before the game that if you're going to score or have a good performance, it's the same that I felt the atmosphere with this game building and building and it's been a really sharp start from both teams, a real intensity to the game, it's fantastic to watch. Eric Tamahag, who hasn't won any of his last five away games in all competitions, did well in the domestic cup competitions last season, of course, won the League Cup, got to the final of the FA Cup. Manchester United are already out of the League Cup this time round, beaten by Newcastle. This could be a big chance with the Champions League already gone. If Ten Hag's to get more silverware, this is the competition to try and do it. That's a great burst. Clear into the penalty area, tries to take them all on. He nussled in between two defenders, but then got held up by Menu. That was another chance for Wigan. Sean Clare into the penalty area. I find it so interesting to see how much space he had. And speaking of space, Rashford rolls it in front of Garnacho, but the reason he had so much space is the flag is raised on the far side. Yeah, brilliant high line from Wigan. They just knew exactly what Rashford was doing. We've seen it so often breaking down this left-hand side. He was just looking for that slip ball for Garnacho. He'd run from the opposite side, but Wigan tell you what, their fullback Claire on the right-hand side, finding himself in so much space. He dribbled into the box past Fernandez. It was almost like he didn't believe in himself. He didn't believe he was in that situation against Manchester United and end-to-end -end stuff. Sam Tickle has it wearing all black away to our left-hand side. 
Gives it short to Charlie Hughes, who'll play it up over the halfway line and up and over the striker Stephen Humphreys, and that carries through to Andre Onana, wearing all bright, luminous green, away to our right-hand side. Onana, who is the only Manchester United player to have started every game in all competitions this season. This is Aaron wan -Bissaka in the right full-back position. And we can on sitting back absorbing, they do want to press here, and Asgard will chase up and force Varane to give it here to Evans on the near touchline. Rashford plays it hurriedly forward, and too hurriedly, and he's given it away to Godot, who'll come up over the halfway line, runs it to Bruno Fernandes, and wins a free kick for his team. Yeah, early days, really good, again, the shape from Wigan. The areas where they're choosing to really engage with the Manchester United players is really central and really wide. And it's been really intelligent so far from Sean Maloney, the way that he's got his team set up. They look really confident just playing. Balance of confidence tonight is going to be very interesting to watch. Wigan will grow in confidence the longer they don't go behind in the game. And might Manchester United's confidence show brittleness should they fail to capitalise on naming a, a, such a strong team tonight against a lower league opposition from the third tier? Charlie Hughes, 30th appearance for him in all competitions this season, gives it back to Sam Tickle. And then he clears it away down the left-hand side, looking for Jordan Jones, who hasn't seen much of it so far. Former Middlesbrough player, most, most of what Wigan have done has come down the right wing in these early stages, but they win a throw-in here on the left-hand side, and Sisson Young will take it. Stephen Sisson Young, who has played against Manchester United in the FA Cup before. He was in the Charlton team that got to the uh, quarter-final, I think it was. Well, was it the fifth round I can't remember but they, they got to one of the latter stages against Manchester United not so long ago in the FA Cup Garnacho gets it back here for the visitors into Kobe Menu, back to Raphael Varane and Rashford has gone away from his duties out wide he's coming to a more central position Dello has gone forward on that left hand side but closed down by Sean Clare, Manchester United go back into the centre circle once again. Yeah, there's a lot of rotation for Manchester United, knowing before the game that they're likely to dominate possession. Dallow and Evans are actually interchanging centrally and wide to try and find Manchester United the outpass to get away from this Wigan structure, which has been really good so far. This is only the second time these clubs have ever met in the FA Cup, and it's the first time they've ever met here in the competition. The record attendance, by the way, for this stadium which was originally called the JJB. That was when Manchester United won the league here back in the Alex Ferguson days. It went to the last day of the season, they won here, and there's never been a bigger crowd at this stadium. That's very good control by Marcel Goro, who comes forward with a couple of step-overs and weaves in field of Mano. He started the game well. There's a bit of fizz and energy about him as Humphreys creates a bit of space for himself on the right-hand side. Needs support in the middle now. Tries to nutmeg Rashford. It does go through the legs of the Manchester United player, but is recovered by Dallow at the other side. Manchester United get it back on the edge of their own penalty area. Dallow gives it short to Mano. And Manchester United move up towards the halfway line. Kobe Mado, who's very quickly become an important player for Eric Ten Hag. Wigan Athletic nil, Manchester United nil. Five lights from the BBC. Varane, ten yards inside his own half with the yellow boots. And Phil Varane, who scored the winning goal against Wolves at Old Trafford on the opening weekend of the season. A campaign that started with such optimism for Eric Ten Hag. Last season, Rashford got the 30 goals. They did lift silverware. They were back in the Champions League. It all felt like a club going in the right direction. But so far, this 23-24 campaign has been dreadful for Eric Ten Hag. And he can only hope that the 24 part of it is going to be better than the 23 part of it. And this is the first game that Manchester United have played of the new year. Varane has the ball, gives it to Juan Bissaka. Good first touch football, a back heel by Bruno Fernandes. Creates a shooting opportunity for Ganacho. It's blocked down. Loose ball ricochets for Rashford, who's in the penalty area. Lovely footwork, Rashford! And the shot is blocked away again in front of the goalkeeper and out for a corner. The best we've seen of Manchester United. 14 minutes in, a shot from Rashford blocked away for a corner kick. Yeah, you know what? I think that's a fantastic save from Sam Tickle because the ball has gone through a lot of bodies before it arrives at him. Just watching a replay here, Rashford cutting in on his right foot. Yeah, and it's Tickle with the save around the post. He's done really well there to see that ball at the last second. But again, from Fernandez, a wonderful little flick into the path of Kobe Maney to start that move off. Delightful.
Manchester United have only scored nine Premier League goals away from home this season. It's been a problem for Eric Ten Hag. We're approaching the quarter of an hour mark and they're hoping Manchester United to get the opening goal of this game. The corner is played short. Bruno Fernandes to Marcus Rashford, dribbles into the penalty area, tries to play a low pass and it's cut out. And that's a wasted corner kick opportunity for Manchester United, their first of the game so far. Wigan, though, careless in how they come away from the back. Goddard's pass is given away. And Evans has it once more on the halfway line. Mado drops in between the central defenders. Wigan fans looking on. Most of the noise at the moment coming from the large contingent of away fans. The Manchester United supporters housed across the full length of the pitch, far side from us. Juan Bissaka gives it to Hoyland. Back to Varane, to the near touchline. Manchester United's left and... Rashford who took a touch to control it but didn't quite get the elevation he wanted and Wigan are able to head it away and Juan Bissak is in trouble here because Jones has taken it away from him but he's a judge to have handled it as he did so so he sort of charged down Juan Bissaka and the referee Anthony Taylor who was behind that said it was a handball all sorts of protests from Jones who said it hit his chest no VAR remember free kick Manchester United midway inside the Wigan Athletic half Bruno Fernandes standing over it. Bruno Fernandes who won the Portuguese Cup, the Portuguese version of the FA Cup at Sporting in the past. Sends in a right-footed delivery, which is headed away by Liam Shaw on the edge of the penalty area. Humphreys gets a, a touch to try and put it in front of Godot, but Mano, very composed, gets there first and controls the ball and gets it back for the visitors. Wigan Athletic nil, Manchester United nil. Bruno Fernandes coming again. Plays it in, looking for Hoyland, good delivery. Charlie Hughes backpedalling, is forced to put it out for another Manchester United corner. Yeah, Manchester United is starting to go up another gear. It's all coming from that man, Kobe Mainu, in the centre of the pitch. He's quickly become a mainstay for Manchester United. And I'll tell you why, because he is so good at sniffing out danger and keeping Manchester United in possession of the ball, sustaining attacks. He's going to be one to watch for the future because what I've seen so far is fantastic. So the corner is going to be taken by Bruno Fernandes at the last one they took it short this time the referee is delaying because Hoyland's got in to step on the toes of the keeper and Anthony Taylor is coming across and just asking for a little bit of a gap between those two all sorts of jostling for position inside the box as Bruno Fernandes does play this one directly in it was a well-timed lunge by Varane at the front post but it's blocked away for yet another corner yeah, was a good little ball in from Fernandes just a little bit of variation on these corners from Manchester United Rashford looking for it short again just asking the question of Wigan are they going to pull another player out this time it's played short again Bruno Fernandes gets it back from Marcus Rashford floats it towards the back post McTominay jumps can't get it Evans will try to get it under his control back down on the deck but Sean Clare lunges in ahead of him that's very good from Sean Clare wins it back for Wigan and a chance of a counter-attack maybe Shaw though takes the conservative approach plays the pass to Morrison and they will build their way out from the back here, Wigan. Session on the edge of the box. Looks, oh, that's a high-risk ball across field to Goro, but he does find his target. Keeps it away from Dello. Morrison will roll it back to the goalkeeper again. And no nonsense from Tickle as he plays it up towards the halfway line. Controlled by Asgard, who wants a free kick. Claims he was fouled by Johnny Evans. Anthony Taylor says no. 18 minutes on the clock, nil-nil. Possession being dominated by Manchester United, the Premier League club, as we would have expected. Garnacho cutting in off the wing on the right-hand side. Gets to within five yards of the penalty area. He's managed to smuggle it through to Bruno Fernandes. And further on to Rashford in the box. Tries to pull it back on his right boot. Well-timed challenge from Morrison. Rashford, though, keeps it going. And Adiko slides in to put it out for Manchester United's fifth quarter in 18 minutes. It's brilliant 1v1 defending by Wigan. Just Fernandez fizzing the ball out to Rashford and he looks to cut inside on that right foot again. Stands up and it was Adeko actually who got the clearance. But Manchester United really turning the screw now. So Bruno Fernandez sends this one into the penalty area. Headed out at the front post by Asgard who's picked out Godo who sprints up towards the halfway line and he's played it across to Jones on the other wing and it's a really good tackle as Mainu slides in, crunches in, not once, twice. Kobe Mainu to regain possession. 
for the visitors. Main has probably been Manchester United's best player of these early stages. Bruno Fernandes plays a 1-2 on the edge of the box. McTominay arrives and he tries to side foot it but puts it wide. Opened up his body, tried to side foot it into the bottom corner and he's about two feet wide. Oh, I tell you what, again the ball's come from Kobe Mainu winning the ball back and then this little bit of play from Manchester United is absolutely delightful. And it's Scott McTominay just tries to open his body, he takes the ball off Hoyland and he looks to guide the ball past Sam Tickle and Sam Tickle's watching on happily because the ball's gone wide of the post. Sign of relief for Wigan there. Tickle's yet to have a proper shot to save, he's been helped out by his defence once or twice. Here is Thilo Asgard. Scott, whose most recent goal came earlier on in this FA Cup run when he scored at Exeter in November. This is Liam Morrison at the back. Clever ball up to Asgard again. He played it right between Rashford and Bruno Fernandes, who are standing almost sh shoulder to shoulder, but he somehow smuggled it through the middle of those two. It's a very good pass. Here's Jordan Jones on the far side. Wigan are showing confidence. League one against Premier League, but they are not bowing down. They are not being over-reverential. And that's very much exemplified by a Cruyff turn by Charlie Hughes on the edge of his own penalty area to suck the ball away from Rasmus Hoyland and roll it back to the keeper. Yeah, playing with a real confidence, Wigan. You can just see they're very happy to play out from the back, try and evade the Manchester United press, and the more they do it, the more aggravated Manchester United are getting, exactly like you just said, Connor. That little Cruyff turn, they're building in confidence. Varane jumps on the halfway line for Manchester United, but he's had to go straight to Humphreys. Maynou comes in to try and disrupt. Wigan hold on to the ball. Good work from Humphreys with the bleach blonde hair. And he goes around Maynou, but runs into Juan Bissaka. And then a good, smart turn by McTominay in the midfield. Might create something for the visitors here. He rolls it to the right-hand side. Bruno Fernandes onto Garnacho. Wigan wants an offside flag. Headed away by Morrison. Back across the edge of his own goal. It sits up for Rashford. First shot comes back off a defender. Dallow arrives. Hits it right foot and it scores. Super goal by Diogo Dallow. Tucks it away into the bottom corner. Through a forest of legs. He picked his spot there. Diogo Dallo, second goal of the season for him. And Manchester United lead, 22 minutes played. Wigan nil, Manchester United won. Yeah, and Dallo's average positioning for a fullback has been more inside today. And that is exactly where the goal has come from. The ball is broken down the right hand side. It was Bruno Fernandes into the path of Garnacho, I think it was. He'd just gone for the cross, and Hoyland's in there. Falls to Rashford, he just lays it into the path of Dallow who just curls it with composure and finesse into the far corner through a load of bodies like you say Connor and a wonderful goal from Dallow a brilliant goal for Manchester United and sadly that's Wiggins press beaten what have they got now so just as we were praising the confidence being exuded by Wigan Manchester United have rocked them back on their heels it's the first goal that Wigan have conceded in the FA Cup this season. This is their third game in the competition. How are Sean Maloney's team going to react to this? wan Saka rolls it back to Onana. Eric Ten Hag, who's named a strong team tonight. And that's just what he would have wanted. Manchester United taking the lead midway through the first half. Diogo Dello, who got a fine goal in the win at Sheffield United in October, only his second ever Premier League goal. It's now his second goal of this campaign. Manchester United, who haven't lost away in the FA Cup third round for 40 years. They've got to go back to when Ron Atkinson was the manager. They were beaten by third-tier Bournemouth at the old Dean Court, and the Bournemouth manager back in those days was one Harry Redknapp. That's how long ago it was. This is Garnacho into the penalty area, just in front of McTominay. Sits up for Rashford! Oh, he hits it off the keeper, and he thinks it's over the line! No goal line technology, remember. It hits the keeper, it hits the post. It comes back to Sam Tickle. I don't think it went over the line, and the officials certainly aren't indicating that they think so. And 1-0 it remains. Izzy Christensen. Oh, I think Sam Tickle saved by the post. The ball from Rashford, or the, or the shot, should I say, has fizzed across the surface of the pitch, and Tickle's just got a hand to it, and it's gone beyond him, and it's hit the post and ricocheted back across the line, and he's managed to get his hands to it. But there was no indication from the linesman on the far side that the ball crossed the line. It was firmly struck by Rashford, but it was straight to the keeper. Had 
that gone in, we would have been blaming Tickle for not saving it. He, he should have stopped it, slipped through him, hit the post, and fortunately for the young keeper, it came back into his arms. Free kick to Wigan on the halfway line. Sam Tickle, who has been selected for England under-21 squads this season, has yet to make his debut at that level. He to withdraw from the November squad because of injury, but that's how highly rated he is. Morrison has the ball at the back for Wigan, gives it to... Sean Clare, so much of the noise at the moment coming from the DW Stadium is from the Manchester United fans on what is a rarity, a surprising rarity for Manchester United fans to be watching their team away from home in this competition and obviously they got to the final last year and they played at neutral Wembley but Manchester United haven't played an away game in the FA Cup in front of fans since before the pandemic would you believe? All their games before the Wembley matches last season were at home. Previous season, they had a few at home. They then had, obviously, behind closed doors games during the pandemic. But it's been a long, long time since Manchester United fans have come on the road to cheer on their team in this competition. And they're very much enjoying it here. As Evans is cut on the edge of his own penalty area. Not a great challenge at all by Asgard, not by Asgard, by Liam Shaw. And the referee has given the free kick to Manchester United, a little warning to Shaw there as well, is he? Yeah, Shaw was close up to getting to Johnny Evans, the ball was played to Johnny Evans from Anana, quite, you know, riskily may I say. Shaw had every reason to jump in and Johnny Evans was just clever using all of his experience just to get his body in between him and Shaw and take the free kick. But Wigan, after going a goal down, have definitely up to gear in terms of getting a tighter to Manchester United when the ball is being played out. You can't help but think of that early chance for Wigan, for Asgard in the third minute. And that is it, FA Cup dreams can come and go in the blink of an eye. And Thilo Asgard had a big chance, we've got a credit on Anna. Spread his body well, got out to tighten the angle too as Johnny Evans makes a smart in interception in the midfield and Bruno Fernandes will take it forward he picks out Rashford just outside the penalty area Marcus Rashford in front of Hoyland shoots on target good save Sam Tickle moving to his right dangled his left leg behind him and he was able to stretch that out and deny Rasmus Hoyland a shot that didn't have much power but was going on target Wigan nil Manchester United won it remains Wigan still trying to play it out from deep at the back they have it with Adiko inside the penalty area He'll give it to Charlie Hughes and out to the left-hand side and Jordan Jones now brings it up towards the halfway line. Is he Christensen? Yeah, the fans are loving it, the way that we're going to play. And although they have gone a goal down, the way they're playing is very admirable. They're building from the back, they're not afraid of the Manchester United pressure. And again, that save from Sam Tickle from Rasmus Hoyland was absolutely brilliant. If you watch it back, the way that he sticks his leg out in anticipation of what Hoyland's doing, very, very impressive. More reaction to the FA Cup fourth round draw at half time with Mark Chapman back in the studio. But Tottenham will host Manchester City, Chelsea host Aston Villa. The winner of this game, Wigan or Manchester United, will be away against either Newport County of League Two or non league Eastleigh. So that will be one of the uh, prize fixtures that I'm sure the television companies will be looking at. Maidstone United, who are the lowest ranked club, they visit Ipswich of the Championship. As Adiko comes forward for Wigan here, but his shot goes straight into the shins of Varan. Good positioning from the French international there. We can hold on to possession. Jordan Jones has it near the byline on the left-hand side. Gives it back to Stephen Humphreys. Garnacho's back helping out the defence. Humphreys tees himself up to shoot, sends it in. And Cotto, as if he was jumping over it, when maybe he needed to side foot it towards the target. Don't know if Cotto would have been onside. Maybe that's why he was jumping. But as it is, it's squirted beyond him and out for a goal kick and 1-0 it remains to Manchester United. I'll tell you what, Connie, he's actually jumping because he's trying to Cruyff the ball into the back of the net. He's trying to guide the ball. And I think he's looking at the linesman as if to say, please put your flag up because I know <laughs> I've missed a big chance there. Ooh. And again, Wigan providing a threat. Well, I think we've seen ample evidence from this Manchester United defence that Wigan are going to get one or two chances. Maybe not as many as their visitors, but... They've had two clear-cut opportunities now. They've had a few other half chances. We haven't reached the half-an-hour mark yet. Long way to go. Wigan nil. Manchester United won for now. Last year's finalist, Manchester United, hoping that they're going through to the fourth round. Bruno Fernandes gives it out to the right wing to Aaron Wan-Bissaka. Short ball for Garnacho To the byline, swings it in. Hoyland clips the crossbar. Diving header from the Dane, but he couldn't get it down. It clipped the top of the bar. And over the top, and a goal kick to Wigan. It remains Wigan Athletic 1, Manchester... Sorry, Wigan Athletic 0, Manchester United 1. Yeah, Manchester United have been electric 
at times across that front three. On paper, I really like the look of Rashford, Hoyland and Garnacho, and they've really proven real cohesion so far. And that ball in from Garnacho on his right foot from the right-hand side into Hoyland. And Hoyland, yeah, probably should have done better, but he just applauded Garnacho as if to say that's exactly what I want and exactly what he's going to need for the rest of the season. It's been a big talking point for Manchester United fans this campaign. Hoyland's come in, service to him has not been good in domestic football. He has got the goals in the Champions League, but so few crosses like that for him to attack in his Manchester United career so far as passes played too far in front of Godo. Wigan running out of play. Goal kick to the visitors. I'll tell, I'll tell you why, though. It, it's because Anthony's normally operating on that right-hand side and he's favourable to come inside onto his left foot and it just ruins the... I say ruins, it's just a different dimension. And when you have Garnacho out there on the right foot, naturally he's going to provide crosses and it's just an example of what we've just seen, how effective Manchester United could be in that area. No Anthony for the visitors tonight, not even on the bench. And so Nana takes the goal kick and rolls it short for Rafael Varane. Towards the halfway line he comes and releases it short to Wan-Bissaka on the right-hand side. This is Johnny Evans in the centre to the Manchester United goal scorer Diogo Dallo. Dallo playing at left back. In the absence of Luke Shaw. Regulon has gone back to Spurs. Varane again. Under pressure will turn and roll it back to Onana. The Dallo goal has taken some of the pressure off the visitors, but 1 0, as we well know, can be a dangerous lead in football. Here is Garnacho, just over the halfway line, gives it into Kobe Menu. Rolls it back to the centre circle again and Johnny Evans and back out to where this began with Von Bissak on the right-hand side. 31 minutes played at the DW Stadium. Manchester United in the red shirts, white shorts, white socks tonight. Down goes Hoyland, uh, just on the edge of the penalty area. And that is going to be a free kick to Manchester United. And what might even be within a shooting distance here, maybe just outside. Bruno Fernandes will be interested in it, maybe just at the limits of his range. But we can suffice to say will be erecting a wall here and bringing all their players back behind the ball. Wigan nil, Manchester United one. Yeah, Rashford's lurking as well. He's gone in to put his name in the mix and Garnacho's there having a conversation with Bruno Fernandes. I'm not sure whether that's about the free kick, but Rashford's approached the ball right in front of it. Fernandes has got a little bit of an angle on it, but I agree with you, Connor. It's a little bit too far out, I think, for Fernandes, but let's see what happens. Bruno Fernandes, who's probably due a goal, his last one came against Galatasaray, that was in the Champions League in November. Rashford walks up purposely, does hit it and puts it wide. Well, he did that sort of knuckleball technique, it went over the wall, it was swerving, but it swerved away from the target. Rashford then tried to suggest to the officials that it might have clipped the wall on the way through. Anthony Taylor says no, and that is a goal kick to Wigan. Yeah, he tried to strike it quite early. As soon as the referee blew his whistle, there wasn't any waiting. Rashford just started his run-up. And like you say, he approached the ball straight and hit it with his laces sort of down into the ground. And you can always tell the indication from the goalkeeper. He dived to, to cover that goal, but um, yeah, it wasn't on target, was it? Marcus Rashford, who scored last time out, the defeat at Nottingham Forest. Scored a penalty against Everton last month. He's only had three goals in all competitions for Manchester United this season. The other one came in an exciting game at Arsenal back in September. And got Rashford, whose, whose body language hasn't looked as happy as recent campaigns this time round. Manchester United fans hoping they'll see better from him in the second half of the campaign now. This is Liam Morrison, orange boots, one of the central defenders for Wigan, playing it out wildly towards the left wing, and Jordan Jones isn't able to keep it in play. That went out for a throw. Throw into Manchester United, 12 minutes to go to the break. Diogo Dallo's goal separating these teams. And there'll be a lot of excitement at both Newport County and Eastleigh now watching this game with major intent because one of those is going to be playing one of these in the fourth round. Johnny Evans cushions a header back over his own halfway line, back into the path of Aaron Wambasaka who will run into his penalty area and release it back to Onana once again. Last season was a really tough one for Wigan. They finished bottom of the championship. They were relegated. They were knocked out of the FA Cup at this stage last season, beaten by Luton Town. Now of the Premier League, both those clubs were together in the championship last season. Wigan going down to League One, Luton going up to the Premier League. 
This is Bruno Fernandes, ten yards outside the penalty area, did well to get the pass through to Kobe Menu. back to Bruno Fernandes again, playing with a bit of a swagger now, sells a dummy, Menu's quick feet on the edge of the penalty area, now Rashford tried to flick it into some space, dragged under the studs, and he does feed it to Rashford just outside the penalty area on the left-hand left side, Rashford dances a couple of times over it. He's got Godot standing up in front of him. Mano's challenged by Godot. That's really good work from Godot and what we're going to want to see more of if they're to get back into this one. Asgard tries to take it away and he is taken down by Hoyland. Free kick to Wigan just inside their own half. That's brilliant from Wigan. Again, it was Godot providing the pressure onto Rashford. He didn't dive in. He stood him up on the edge of the 18-yard box. As he played it square to Mano, he continued his press and he ended up winning the ball back and just relieving a little bit of pressure for his team. Mentioned no Anthony for Manchester United tonight, not even on the bench. We're told he's injured. Uh, no Christian Eriksen this evening either. He is ill. And, uh, it's quite a lengthy absentee list for Eric Tittenhag at the moment with Amrabat and Casemiro, Lindelof, Maguire, Martinez, Mount Malassia. Here's the chance. Chance for Manchester United. Shot in by Rashford. Falls to Hoyland. How did he not score? Rasmus Hoyland has missed an open goal from two yards out. When he mustn't have been expecting it to come to him. Shot from Rashford, drilled to the keeper who could only parry. Hoyland was in the perfect place. I can't believe he's not scored that, is he? Uh, do you know what, Connor? I actually think the linesman put his flag up. And I think a little bit similar to like the situation earlier with Wigan. I think Hoyland's relieved that the linesman has put his hand up, his, his flag up, sorry, because wow. that, that is a miss and a half. Wow. I mean it, it, it wasn't even a stretch, it just sat in front of him. Almost too easy. Here comes Gonacho, good pace, down the right-hand side, he's skimmed away from Sessegnon. This is in full flow, Alejandro Gonacho, McTominay's got a score, saved by Tickle. Hoyland unselfishly flicked it to McTominay in the six-yard box. And as the Scot, who's been in the goals lately, tried to finish with his right boot, Tickle was able to get across and save, but it wasn't to put the laces through it from McTominay. That's the second big chance he's had in the game, and Wigan are playing... High-risk poker now, because if they concede a second before half-time, it's hard to make the case for them coming back. Good work from Humphreys, though, to win a free kick here for Wigan, who still trail by the goal to nil. Yeah, Humphreys just getting his team out of pressure again just by winning a foul. I think it was Johnny Evans on him, just gets his team up the pitch. But Garnacho, I tell you what, down that right-hand side, he's been absolutely unstoppable this first half. And Hoyland, yeah, like you say, unselfishly squared it to Tom McTominay and should have been a 2-0 Manchester United. Martial Godot down the right hand side is fouled by Marcus Rashford. So Godot, who's been swinging the hips and selling dummies all evening, and Rashford was intent on making sure that he did not progress past him there, and it's a quite obvious deliberate foul. And that is a free kick to Wigan, crossing position on the right hand side. It's a few paces outside the corner angle of the penalty area. Manchester United are going to hold a high line here. The defenders are along the edge of the penalty area. Onana on the edge of his six-yard box is ushering them to step out even further. Now, was that Old Trafford on Boxing Day when Aston Villa, from a position almost identical to this, scored a goal? And you might remember Leon Bailey went in around the back of Onana and put him off. But that's the exact position from where this free kick is going to be taken. Jordan Jones standing over it. Stephen Humphreys, too. And they might as well send the bodies up here, Wigan, for this sort of opportunity. And the, the big men are up from the back. It's only Baba Adiko who stayed back in anything like a defensive position. The free kick's been taken short. Humphreys tries to drill a shot, trying to catch Onana out at his near post. And it nicked a defender on the way through. It's a corner to Wigan on the right-hand side. Yeah, I had a little bit of a creative look about what Wigan were going to do with that set piece. And it was just a simple roll short to Humphreys, who's not seen much of the ball, and then they've gone short again. Seven minutes to the break. Wigan tried to take the corner short, but the ball hadn't been inside the quadrant. Wigan's only win against Manchester United here, 2012. Winning goal scored by the current manager, Sean Maloney. That goal came from a short corner, and they play it short again here. This is Goro into the penalty area, clips it over towards the far post, controlled and shot in low by Charlie Hughes, but... Good work from Garnacho. I think it might have been Dallow who got across to cover the right-hand side. Dallow made the main block there. And the ball goes out for a throw into Wigan. Still 1-0 to Manchester United. Yeah, a really good set-piece again from Wigan. They've gone short on that earlier free kick. And then the corner, they've worked it. They managed to sort of get across towards the back post. And just caused my Manchester United a few problems. Deco, this season has been his first taste of playing in the FA Cup. 
Passes to Cotto on the right hand side. That's a poor ball given away. And Hoyland now from inside his own half will charge up and plays it in front to Bruno Fernandes. Now bearing down to the penalty area. Tried to lash in across court towards Garnacho. And Tico got back well to make the block and put the ball out for a throw into Manchester United. Left hand side as they come forward. Rashford takes it quickly. It's a game that's been played at a high pace throughout this evening. Johnny Evans gives it to Aaron Wan Basaka. Now up to little Garnacho on the far side, and he'll come back in field again to Rafael Varane. Plenty of energy from Wigan. They're closing down the runners. They're denying space where they can, but they have had to do a lot of chasing around because Manchester United have thoroughly dominated the possession here tonight. One nil to Eric Ten Hag's team. Garnacho edge of the penalty area, right hand side has a crack with his left foot, and he's hit the crossbar. That would have been spectacular. Outside the penalty area, left-footed shot by Alejandro Garnacho, and for the second time tonight, Manchester United hit the crossbar. Oh, Still 1-0. I tell you what, that man over there on the right-hand side for United, Garnacho has been absolutely electric and showing prowess on, on the right, on his right foot. He's come inside on that occasion and an absolutely brilliant strike on his left foot. And Tickle had no chance. He dived and the ball just ricocheted off the crossbar, but brilliant from Garnacho. This is Five Live from the BBC. Five minutes to go to half-time at the DW Stadium. Wigan Athletic nil. Manchester United won. Just some breaking news on Five Live. Some sad news, I'm afraid. The Wales and British and Irish Lions legend J.P. Or Williams has died at the age of 74. One of the all-time greats. And we will have reaction to that news and a celebration of uh, his achievements at half-time here on Five Live. At half-time break, four minutes plus the stopper just to go. Varane. Gives it to Juan Bissaka on the far side. Infield to Bruno Fernandes. Manchester United fans singing in the cold. Celebrating the Dallow goal that has given them the lead. Wigan, whose defending has been stern. Very honest defending from them. Dallow, though, smuggling his shot into the bottom corner with a very accurately placed dispatch shot. Rashford here rolls it in front of Dallow, but rolls it too far in front of him. And Rashford has had a few shots to the goalkeeper, but many of his passes have gone awry tonight. And that goes out for a goal kick to Wigan. Wigan, who still trail by the goal to nil. Yeah, but there's been a real zip to Manchester United this evening. A zip which I've not really seen yet this season, or we have seen in glimpses. But there's looked like there's been a really nice structure behind the ball. Fernandez has been excellent in that central area. And I really like the balance of Rashford and Garnacho on either side of, of Hoyland. And you can see... There's a real spring in some of these players' steps and that might be the start of something to come for the new year. Manchester United, who last won the FA Cup in 2016. You might remember that was right at the very end of Louis van Gaal's tenure. And the only current players remaining from that side that won the Cup in 2016 are Rashford and, and Martial. Here's Bruno Fernandes to the byline, left-hand side. Swings it in, McTominay got up really well. Maybe a fraction too early. McTominay was on his way back down as the ball came off his chest and... Out it goes for a goal kick, but he is making those runs into the penalty area, not just tonight, with frequency, and he's been rewarded with the goals, and he's been Manchester United's top Premier League goal scorer this season, Scott McTominay. Yeah, it looked like an excellent run from McTominay, just a late third-man run from midfield, and the ball across from Fernandez was excellent, but I actually think in McTominay's defence, he actually didn't see the ball until the very last second, and that's what's put him off, but if you watch it back, you'd think he should nestle that. Manchester United have had a lot of chances in this first half. If Wigan were to get an equaliser at some stage, Eric Ten Hag would rue those misses. But I think in the main, he'll be pleased. They're creating opportunities. They are keeping the opponents quiet. There have been a couple of scares, but you would say Manchester United worthy of their lead so far. Two minutes to the break. Ball is rolled back across the edge of the Wigan penalty area. Goalkeeper Tickle. Send it left footed, long searching up of the halfway line straight to Juan Basaka, who's got the confidence to flick it in field for his time to Johnny Evans. And now Diogo Dello, the man whose goal separates the teams, passes it back to Juan Basaka once again. Manchester United, who have only conceded one goal in their last 10 games against Wigan, and that was the, the Sean Maloney goal, the winning goal in 2012. One could be enough tonight, there's no doubt Eric Ten Hag will want more. Kobe Mado cuts it back for Bruno Fernandes, who gives it away. A Dico winning possession back for Wigan. And then on the edge of his own penalty area, Hughes is under. Look, Bruno Fernandes knew he gave it away there, so he hounded after Charlie Hughes to try and win it back again. And he's 
sprinting back again with the support of Garnacho, and that pressure tells, and we can run the ball out of play for a Manchester United throw. Yeah, fans see that, they see everything, and there's no problem giving the ball away, but if your reaction is positive afterwards, it's absolutely fine, and Bruno Fernandes leading by example there, just, and that is one of the parts of his game which he is exceptional at, he's pressing, he, think, he doesn't really get the credit he deserves for the amount of work he puts in off the ball, and, and that is an example of how a Manchester United player should be. Here is Garnacho, just inside the penalty area that Manchester United attack. Juan Bissak has gone outside him, gets to the byline. Steven Sessegnon trying to hold him up. Back to Garnacho again. Hoyland waiting in the middle, trying to find position. And as Garnacho tries to send in a cross, it hits Sessegnon, it comes back and hits Garnacho, and it goes out for a goal kick. So 1-0 tonight, the last time Manchester United played here at this stadium, they won by four goals to nil. That was the season that... Wigan were relegated from the Premier League. Javier Hernandez got two. Robin van Persie got two. That was that era of Manchester United. Tonight, the goal scorer has been Diogo Dallo. And we move into stoppages at the end of the first half and just one minute to be added on, which is a rarity these days, but I think it's reflective of a game that has been flowing. No hold-ups at all. We haven't had anyone injured. We haven't had any VAR, obviously, with that not being involved tonight and the game has flowed this is Varane, nice touch Kobe Maynou attempt by Humphreys to close him down but there is a swagger about Manchester United now they're enjoying the game more McTominay over the halfway line to Dallow out to Rashford hugging the touchline on the left hand side playing a good pass into Bruno Fernandes back to goal turn shoot didn't fully complete the arc of his turn though and the shot is well off target in the end still 1-0 to the visitors yeah he's in the mood isn't he Bruno Fernandes a really nice bit of play from Manchester United working the ball from right to left and it's Rashford dropping a little bit deeper and then runners have gone in front of him Bruno Fernandes or Dallow there's been a mixture of both in this first half and that occasion a little feeded ball by Rashford into Fernandes who's cruyffed and tried to curl it into the far corner but the angle wasn't quite right Manchester United who tend to uh, dispatch their opponents in the third round of the FA Cup when they come up against them and at half time here Eric Ten Hag's team do lead at the DW Stadium. The Dallow goal, well taken, just inside the penalty area, right-footed shot through a host of defenders to tuck into the bottom corner. Tickle the goalkeeper, couldn't react to get down in time. Wigan will rue missed opportunities, though. Big ones for Thilo Asgard and for Martial Godo. But it's Manchester United, is he, who lead at the break? Yeah, probably deservedly so as well on reflection, but Wigan have been exceptional. The shape's been brilliant, the structure very, very well coached, I must say, from what I've seen in that first half. But Manchester United haven't dropped their standards at all. They've been sharp, they've been on it, and I think that man, Kobe Mainu, in the centre of the park has really set the, the tone for Manchester United. 45 minutes to go, it's Wigan Athletic nil. Manchester United 1. Uh, second half on the way here on 5 Live Sport. Let's go to the Masters snooker. Jamie Broughton currently watching Mark Williams against Ali Carter. And Mark Williams, a two-time champion of the Masters, now leads by three frames to two. He's knocked in breaks of 66 and just a few moments ago, a break of 93. Earlier today, the record seven-time champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, booked his place in the quarterfinals with a 6-3 win over Ding Junhui. But the highlight of that match was the 1-4-7 maximum break that Ding made in frame seven. That was only the fourth 1-4-7 in Masters history. Ronnie O'Sullivan now faces Neil Robertson or Barry Hawkins on Thursday. Uh, you can watch uh, that game live on the iPlayer, the BBC Sport website and app at the moment. You can also see Ding's 147 on the BBC Sport website too. As Connor mentioned in commentary just a few uh, moments ago, uh, sad news this evening with the death of JPR Williams, the former Wales and British and Irish Lions fullback. We will remember his life and his career achievements with our correspondent Chris Jones after the latest BBC News. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. The government says it's agreeing details of a plan to speed up overturning the convictions of people wrongly found guilty of fraud when post office computers malfunctioned. It'll also consider how private prosecutions like these take place. The business minister, Kevin Hollingrake, said it was his highest priority to make sure that such a tragedy could never happen again. We have devised some options for resolving the outstanding criminal convictions with much more pace. My right honourable friend, the Lord Chancellor, will 
quite rightly, need to speak to senior figures in the judiciary about these options before we put them forward. But I am confident that we should be able to implement measures which address the concerns expressed by the advisory board, and I hope the government shall be able to announce these proposals to the House very shortly. The American Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says leaders in the Middle East who he has spoken to are determined to stop the Gaza conflict spreading. He's in Israel tonight for talks after visiting Saudi Arabia. The Lebanese militia group Hezbollah says Israel has killed one of its commanders in a drone strike. One of football's greatest ever defenders, Franz Beckenbauer, has died at the age of 78. The German is one of only three men to win the World Cup, both as a player and a manager. Three energy companies have been given permission to resume force-fitting prepayment meters in some customers' homes. The practice was suspended last year after agents for British Gas were exposed installing them, but Ofgem now says EDF, Octopus and Scottish Power have met new rules to protect vulnerable people. And Apple has begun making payments to complainants after agree- agreeing to settle a lawsuit which claimed it deliberately slowed down certain iPhones in the US. The company has denied any wrongdoing. A similar case in the UK is seeking more than £1.5 billion in compensation. The winter transfer window is braving the British weather and is wide open once again. More drama, more twists, more turns. I'm Kay Curd and every weekday throughout January I'll be joined by Luke Edwards and some of the country's best football journalists to dissect the day's transfer rumours. From BBC Radio 5 Live, the Transfer Gossip Daily Podcast. Who will your team buy, sell, loan or even just be heavily linked with only to lose out to your rivals? What will happen next? Keep up to date with all the comings and going straight from the rumour mill with the Transfer Gossip Daily Podcast. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is Five Live Sport with Mark Chapman on Five Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Wigan nil, Manchester United won in the uh, final third round tie of the FA Cup weekend. Second half uh, on the way here on Five Live. But let's talk to our rugby union correspondent, uh, Chris Jones, now with the news uh, being broken in the last half hour or so uh, that the former Wales and British and Irish Lions fullback JPR Williams has died at the age of 74. What a career, Chris. Yeah, what a man, what a player, what an icon. Mark, you know, one of those players you just got to say three letters, JPR. Yes. Yeah. And everyone knows, yeah. And, and that was that era, that great era of, of Wales and Lions rugby. You'd say, you'd say Gareth, Barry, Merv, Phil, JJ, Gerald, and JPR. You know, that you just say those words, you say those names, those letters, and people know you're talking about the great JPR Williams, a Lions legend, 71, winning in New Zealand. No Lions team has done that since 74 the invincibles in south africa i mean anyone who's just watched the footage of 71 and that fourth test and he banged over a drop goal from miles out mm. and then the grand slams you know that it wales teams achieved some special things in recent decades but that 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 those that, that time of the 70s 71 76 78 the slams jpr's role in in those his tackle against france in 76 he played against england 11 times he never lost, scored five tries. He could do it all. He was a an absolute always, legend. Always adds to the legend that if you're unbeaten oh, absolutely. against England. absolutely, as, as, as a Welsh player. But you're sure. right. I, I mean, he, he was part of that group of players that represented a, a golden era mm. for Welsh rugby union, but but they were box office players as well, weren't they? I mean, they, they weren't just winning, they were box office to watch. Yeah, and, and kind of the players that every Welsh player since and today still tries to live up to mm. you know so if you um if you get a, a welsh fly half people go oh you know it, can he do what barry did or gareth you know uh, as a scrum half gareth then it was all what phil bennett and barry john did as tens and as a as a fullback he was a complete rock defensively you know these are the days with big leather balls under you know swirling gary owens in places like like new zealand and and jpr was the man you wanted under the high balls but attacking wise you know we spoke earlier on the show about beckenbauer changing the role and introducing the sweeper to the game you know he was a player who attacked the line and um, and brought the fullback into play as an attacking weapon as well as being that that last line of defense the fullbacks always were 
were. So he was a he was a trendsetter and a game changer. And uh, yeah, but but it was also his his appearance as well, wasn't mm. it? I mean, I know it was the seventies, Chris, but I I can remember one of the earliest books I can remember on my dad's bookshelf at home was a J was I'm assuming I don't know whether a biography an autobi- or an autobiography on JPR and and th- this striking image of him. Yeah, on the, the, sideburns. On the, the yeah. sideburns and yeah. the long hair, and the, but the socks rolled down mm, mm. in full flight. Yeah, it's like and when you think of these legends, you know, think of Barry John always held the ball in two hands. You know, any rugby fan yeah. knows about, and I know about JPR with his big sideburns, and as you say, the socks and the way he would he would come into the line with such physicality and pace and daring and and prowess and then also you know I, I was so privileged about almost exactly a year ago because it, it was 50 years ago in in January uh, 2003 since the amazing you know the legendary New Zealand Barbarians game mm. um, and I sat down with with Willie John McBride for the pod and with uh, with Gareth Edwards and with Mike Gibson and with JPR and just hearing them reminisce and it's all the because he's involved that, in that try He's involved in that try, yeah. And it's the legend around the fixture. You know, they met up on the Thursday or Friday, but they'd been pals from the Lions in 71. So they didn't need to train for weeks and weeks and weeks like the modern players. They they went for a drink, they chucked the ball around and they went out there. And just hearing them talk as much about everything around the game. You know, JPR was an orthopaedic surgeon. You know, these guys yes. were, were pillars of the community away from rugby. So you win 55 caps, you win eight tests for the, you play eight tests for lines, you're unbeaten on tours in New Zealand and South Africa, you win three slams, you never lose to England, and you're a surgeon as well. But and these were kind of what these, these men could do. I also read, I mean, I've just read an article here, and I, I don't know whether you could, that he, he kept playing till 2003. Into his 50s? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and <laughs> but that, that that was the era, wasn't it? These guys played for the love of it, mm. and it, like every every sport changes, doesn't it? But no sport has probably had that complexion change like rugby union because it was so late to the to the party professionally. You know, football and cricket and rugby league been professional for ages before, so you it just makes. It, it, it juxtaposes the two eras. It doesn't make one better than the other, but it does make the JPR mm. era all the more special and all the more magical when you compare it to, to these days. And, you know, we, we love the game for what it is these days, but there was something different and special about it back then. And, and and just the moments, you know, the drop goal in 71, the tackle, which would have been a shoulder charge, probably a yellow card penalty try these days. But back then it was the one of the great tackles in Welsh history on France to seal the slam in 76, the record against England, what he did with the Lions in 74, that team in 74, you know, the names just roll off the tongue. And yeah, you, you, you add to the fact that he played deep into his 50s, because he was so fit, so physical, loved it so much. Um, it just all adds to the to the legend of the man. Mm. And he also won the 1966 British Junior title at the All England Club. In just the t- his, in, the in t- his spare time. Just to, <laughs> just to throw that in. Speak Jonathan Davis into, into the conversation for the Welsh International. What are your memories of him as a player and a man, Jonathan? Um, well, you know, he was... Uh... He was an absolute legend, you know. There's not many people who go by their initials. Um, mm. And he was known as JPR. So, you know, watching him grow up, um, he always he was rocking defence. You know, as Chris mentioned there, the tackles he made. You know, when he was at the Lions, when the fight broke out, he, was, he kept you know, he kept running in from the full back to punch all the big forwards. <laughs> He's off his head. He's absolute nutcase. You know, he was, but he was ferociously determined, but so competitive. Um, but he was just an, an icon, you know. You, you think this year now, Phil Bennett has gone, David Watkins has gone, Eddie Butler, you know, went. So, you know, it's just very sad that um, you know when I hear the news about six o'clock that you know JPR had passed, and um, you know he was, he was just an immense rugby player. And whenever you mention who was the greatest fullbacks in, in world rugby of any era, you know you'll come with your Blancos and your Christian Cullens, but JPR is always in the mix. Always in the mix, and uh, you know, if you wanted anyone behind you at the full back, I couldn't think of anyone better. He was absolutely brilliant, yeah. um, fiercely competitive. Because I, I remember when I went to Bermuda to play in the, you know, one of the old farts tournaments, and uh, <laughs> he was there. He was there. He was like getting stuck in. I was going, what's wrong with him? <laughs> <laughs> then when we got knocked out by Argentina, then he went to ask the Americans to see if he could play for them. <laughs> 
<laughs> that just summed him up. That just summed him up. Nothing, you know. He just what he had this appetite to perform and to play, and um, he, he was just an incredible, incredible character. Maybe you know, of all of all the legends that have you know gone before, maybe the most competitive man. I have ever come across in my life. I'll tell you a funny story. Blair and Bowen told me this story. They played ex-players, England versus Wales, right? And all of a sudden, Wales scored the last minute and Blair and Bowen went to drop a goal, but he back it and he missed and he lost against England, right? And JPR sprinted up to him and said, I've never lost to England. I've never <laughs> lost to England. <laughs> Blair and thought he's going to fill him in. <laughs> <laughs> he, um, I mean, I mean, as well as that competitive nature, then there is also that evident love for for the sport, Jiffy. From from as I was saying, you know, retiring in in two thousand and three to serving as as Bridge End president all the way and until he died. He just loved it, you know. It, uh, you have you got to have these people mm. in club rugby. You know, there's grassroots, which I was, I was very fortunate to come from. But you know, he is. Regarded so highly in Bridgen, you know, for and he was still playing for Tondi seconds, you know, as a wing forward late into his 40s, 50s. But he just loved Bridgen, you know, he loved the game and he wanted to be a part of it. And, um, you know, wherever he went, you know, we did Q&As together and I came, come across him, he'd be wearing his blazer, you know, his British Lion 71 blazer. He did look like Norman Wisdom in it, right? But, uh, you know, he was, he was just a, such a character. An iconic character, and every time you met him, you spoke to him, you, you, you mentioned something that had happened in the past and what he had done. He was just, you know, a, an amazing character, an absolute legend of the game, and what a character. Jonathan, thank you very much for coming on. Jonathan Davies with us. Pleasure, on, Jen. On, Pleasure, thank Peter. you, Jonathan. Sad, sad but. And he was seventy four, Chris. So you know, it is it too still, soon. Yeah. It does still feel too soon. But from you can hear from the love in in Jonathan's stories, there will be there will be a real celebration of him, the man, and his career and his ability. Yeah, and I think everyone who watched him will have a, a JPR moment, a JPR story. You know, my my dad, he was on the terraces for some of those great yeah. days. Has just said. I think he was the greatest, you know, and this is a, 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 a bloke who would have seen, you know, Barry John and Gareth Edwards and, and Phil Bennett. But for, for many Welsh fans of, of a certain age, JPR was the greatest. He was the, the, the rock star. He was the the kingpin of that amazing era. And, you know, talking there with Jiffy about his competitive edge, that, that line series in 71, that the legend goes that, he predicted he was going to drop a goal. He never he hadn't dropped a goal all series, but he said on the coach, I'm going to drop a goal to win us the series. And he lamped this goal over from just short of halfway. You know, it had been an incredible drop goal in the modern age and he just absolutely belted it over and his prophecy came true. He was one of those sports people. There aren't many in any era who can talk the talk, can walk the walk and have got you know, the medals to prove it. And JPR Williams was certainly one of those all-time greats. Thank you very much, Chris. I'm sure there'll be plenty more memories of JPR over the course of the evening and tomorrow on Five Live. I'm sure Chris and the Rugby Union weekly team uh, will do him justice on a pod as well. And later on this evening, we will remember Franz Beckenbauer more um, who has died at the age of 78. John Murray will join us at full time of Wigan against Manchester United, which has just resumed the Premier League side of goal to the good. Here's Connor. Thanks very much, Mark. Back underway. No changes in personnel over half time. And the goal from Diogo Dallo separating these teams. Manchester United will feel they are deservedly in front. They had a lot of chances in those first 45 minutes. Hoyland do might have scored with a diving header, maybe was he onside? But there were chances too at the other side for Wigan. Thilo Asgard and Marcel Godot unable to take the opportunities that come their way. And it feels imperative, Izzy Christensen alongside. If Wigan are to get chances like that again, they've got to take them now in this second period. They have to, indeed. And they also need to try and get themselves up the pitch and win some set pieces, which they look really threatening from in the latter stages of the first half. Garnaccio runs the ball out of play before bringing it back in again. And that's a throw into Wigan. Left full-back position, so a reminder of the team, Sam Tickle in goal for Wigan, back four of Sean Clare, Charlie Hughes, Liam Morrison and Stephen Sessegnon. In the middle of the midfield, Liam Shaw <coughs> with uh, Baba Adiko, 
Then left-hand side, Jordan Jones. Right-hand side, Marcel Godot. Thilo Asgard has been in support of the main striker, Stephen Humphreys, a former Fulham player who's leading the line up front. For Manchester United, Andre Onana in goal. Back four, Juan Basaka, Varane, Evans and Dello. Two in the middle, McTominay and Menu. Then Garnaccio wide right, Rashford wide left, and Bruno Fernandes behind Hoyland. Rashford had a few shots straight at the goalkeeper. Plenty of power on them, though, either side. And Sam Tickle would have been in trouble in the first half. So these are early stages of the second period. Manchester United now playing from left to right as we look down. Manchester United fans taking over the entire far side of the stadium, down the length of the pitch. They'll be hoping to see some more goalmouth action in this second period. And Eric Ten Hag could certainly do with a, a second or third here as, as insulation. He's named a very strong team tonight. Just two changes from the last Premier League game. It's a team that has clearly been sent out to get the job done. And here is Dallow giving it short to McTominay in the midfield. Forward to Garnacho. Cesson Young trying to track him. It's been a battle between those two all night. Maino stretches out, doesn't have the longest legs, but he's able to really stretch them like elastic, and he gets possession on the edge of the penalty area. Back to Varane, Manchester United's number 19. Johnny Evans in field of him. And the second half is he picking up as the first half ended. Manchester United dominating the ball. As Rashford gets it wide on the left-hand side, and he fancies one here. Sells a dummy, shoots right foot, it skids off his boot. He set himself up well, but the follow-through didn't deliver what he wanted. Yeah, absolutely, Connor, picking up as they left off the first half indeed, and Dallow just coming into that central area and leaving Rashford isolated on the far left-hand side, 1v1, and again just cutting inside, as we see him do so often, onto his right foot, and he didn't execute that shot correctly, but again, early good, good early signs from Manchester United. Manchester United who have lost five of their last eight games and we wondered if their confidence could be shaken by third tier Wigan tonight at the moment the Premier League team are one goal in front of the opponents 54 league places between them now Wigan slipped a further place down in League One over the weekend when they weren't involved but obviously some of the third tier teams were Wigan who travelled to Northampton for their next game on Saturday in League One, they've then got an EFL trophy match against Doncaster uh, to come next week. But there's no doubt this is what has been dominating their minds since the draw was made for the third round. Manchester United at home is always a plum tie. There's uh, little doubt that this game was going to be shown live on television, which it is. And we can hoping to give a good account of themselves, a club who've had a, a lot of turmoil lately. Relegated from the second tier last season, points deduction at the start of this campaign, transfer embargo too. I mean, it's difficult enough, as um, Eric Ten Hag will tell you, to run a football club when you don't have those impediments, but near impossible when you do, and Sean Maloney is doing his best in very trying circumstances. This is Sean Clare on the far side, running back towards his own penalty area, but he keeps his cool, gives it to Liam Morrison, back in field to the goalkeeper, Sam Tickle, who says enough for that um, ticky-tacky stuff, but he just boots it into the crowd. Proper old-school defending there for the goalkeeper. Yeah, and just going back to Sean Maloney, just in amongst everything that he's doing at the moment you can see his team are very well coached but also he's got time to take selfies with fans before the game which I thought was lovely <laughs> he was a good player Sean Maloney capped many times by Scotland and he's been doing well to educate himself as a coach too you might remember that he was an assistant to Roberto Martinez with the Belgian national team he was with them at the Euros in 2021 they got to the, the quarterfinals had a brief spell in charge of Hibs and he's come back to Wigan where he's been well respected from his exploits as a player in the past. Wigan who had three different managers last season, that's the sort of turmoil they've been through. Evans goes long here for Manchester United, long but not accurate. And it strays away from its intended target of Bruno Fernandes and out for a throw into Wigan, right full-back position. So is he, what do, what do Wigan need to do here to start creating a few chances? Well, it looks like more of the same from the first half, which... I thought they were very impressive in, and yes, they created chances, but, you know, on the flip side, Manchester United should have scored more. But we're going to have come out in this second half in exactly the same structure, the same shape, and I think it won't be until about the 60-minute mark. Here's McTominay, hits it from the edge of the penalty area, too many bodies in the way again, and he finds his shot blocked down and cleared away. McTominay, who has clearly got an eye for goal this season, unable to squeeze it through the barriers there. Yeah, it's more of the same from Wigan, like I was saying. They just need to keep it tight, stay in the game. You Like you said in the first half, 1-0 is a very dangerous scoreline for anyone and gives the team a sniff to get back in the game. And Wigan, 
You know, they've shown really positive things in that first half and they just need one more chance. The winner of this game goes through to play the winner of Newport of League Two and non-league Eastleigh. Those two meeting again for a replay. And uh, suddenly winning that tie has become perhaps more valuable than it, it might have seen on the face of it when the draw was made earlier on tonight before this game kicked off. There's a, there's a potential very high prize here, very high profile prize for Newport or Eastleigh if they can go through. Manchester United holding on to possession, not being overly ambitious since the restart Eric Ten Hag's team content to hold on to the ball to deny possession to their opponents rather than peppering their penalty area with crosses and shots Varane has it in the centre circle here change of direction play towards Bruno Fernandes who dummies it Hoyland gives it to Bruno Fernandes into the penalty area shoots blocked again Wigan defenders have done well tonight to block shots Garnacho tries a back heel that doesn't work in the penalty area and there's a chance for Gotto to try and run out of the box with it but Garnacho tracked him back all the way good persistence from the Argentinian and Manchester United regained possession again. They lead by a goal to nil. Yeah, the sharpness from Manchester United in that first half, they've picked it up again in the second, and a lovely little fizz pass through the centre of the pitch. Fernandez leaves the ball for Hoyland and then spins off the shoulder. It was like clockwork the way it worked, and that is a sign of what we've seen so far this evening. Manchester United have looked really sharp in the final third. Rashford runs down the wing and wins a corner, an interesting dynamic of the away fans being along the edge of the pitch here is that uh, Rashford's got a real close view here's a ball into the penalty area looking for McTominay too tight up against the byline and he does hit a shot off the side netting but I think the ball had already gone out of play uh, when he does so but yes in the second half whenever Marcus Rashford gets the ball now he's got Manchester United fans right alongside it and you could audibly hear them urging him go on take on the fullback use your speed which he did do to decent effect there goal kick for Wigan we have played eight minutes in the second period. The goal from Dano came midway through the first half. Humphreys wins a flick on header, picks out Asgard. Those two had chances in the first half. Asgard sells a little dummy there to Bruno Fernandes. Then he runs in field, takes on Johnny Evans, who holds firm and stands and is able to put the ball out for a throw-in, which is taken quickly. That's clever. Asgard into Gotto, and he's fluffed his lines again. It came at him powerfully, but he just couldn't get his body position right to shoot. He was only about six or seven yards out. Big, big chance for Wigan, and they hope that they can create a few more of those. Yeah, and that's exactly why they're still in this game, Connor. Asgard, Godot, they've looked really threatening throughout. And again on that occasion, big chance gone begging again for Wigan. Two chances for Godot, two similar ones that he couldn't get the final touch to. Did well to get into the location to have the chance here comes Jones down the left that's perked Wigan up a little bit here Sessegnon to Godot on the left hand side level with the edge of the penalty area sends in an in swinging cross but it swings away from Asgard and it goes out for a Manchester United goal kick and, and Wigan needed that a little reminder to their supporters that they're very much still in this game yeah and that's just turned up the noise again in this stadium the Wigan fans know exactly how the players are feeling you can see really positive body language down there from the Wigan players, Jones with that wonderful little ball in. So inviting and nobody on the end of it. It's cold tonight at the DW Stadium. Everyone's brought their warmest coat. Uh, almost everyone in the press box here is wearing a cap. Oh, not you, Izzy, you know, but almost everyone else. Tough stuff, Izzy, who, uh, who doesn't feel the cold, of course. With regret, I forgot. <laughs> with regret. Let me admit. <laughs> you won't make that mistake next time. Here's McTominay. Edge of the penalty area for Manchester United. Left hand side as they come forward. Cuts it back to Bruno Fernandes. Good feet from him to pick out Rashford. Tried to back heel, but wasn't the place to do that. And Morrison is able to get it back. And we can look to clear away, but they are penned in at the moment. Good work for Manchester United to keep this pressure going. Rashford has it again. Just outside the penalty area on the left hand side. Taking on Liam Shaw. Going around the outside of him. Now he needs a little bit of support Dallow provides it good pass Maynou just on the edge of the penalty area keeps things moving Maynou really good for Manchester United at moments like that when they begin to stagnate or slow down but then they have given it away Rashford's poor pass Wigan can't capitalise though as Hoyland battles hard to win it back once again inside the Wigan half Maynou again lovely ball Rashford into the penalty um, Bruno Fernandes I should say to Rashford to the byline tries to cross comes off a defender ball had gone out of play before Rashford brought it back in again and that is going to be a goal kick to Wigan it remains Wigan Athletic nil. Manchester United 1-5 and five live yeah really intense really tight down there Manchester United again Kobe Maynou winning the ball back and setting Manchester United off 
And Rashford just got it to the byline and the ball went out of play in the end. But Wigan really tight, really close defensively, just biding their time in these big, big moments in the game where they cannot afford to concede another because you can't help but think that would be game yeah. done. Well, of course, they would love to come back and win it. But even to come back and draw and to force a replay at Old Trafford would be extremely lucrative for Wigan Athletic, a team that could do with all the financial intake that they can get. Uh, one thing that the record books would just put a bit of a downer on that happening is that there has never, ever been a draw in a game between Wigan Athletic and Manchester United. Maybe tonight is the night for it to happen. Tickle clears away, left-footed clearance from the goalkeeper, up into the centre circle, where Asgard has found it tricky up against Varane in particular. Varane and Evans, two very seasoned defenders who know what they're doing. And on that occasion, Asgard backpedalling has retreated with the back of his head into the face of Rafael Varane. I don't think there's any intent to hurt the opponent there, but Varane has gone down. And for the first time of the game, physios are going to come on some medical treatment needed for the French international, Rafael Varane. Yeah, a bit disappointed there's actually a stoppage to the game because the first half was so free-flowing and the second half has picked up exactly the same. It's been brilliant to watch. And then this, yeah, Varane's taken one in the face, but you can't help but think that... This, this little bit of play, this passage, it's going to take the sting out of the game. Proper cup football tonight, and we hope it continues through the week here on Five Live. This is the beginning of a busy midweek of cup football. Tomorrow night sees the first of the League Cup semi-finals first leg. Middlesbrough hosts Chelsea, you can listen to the game, 8pm kickoff here on Five Live. And the other League Cup semi-final first leg is on Wednesday, Liverpool against Fulham from Anfield, 8pm kickoff again. Uh, those clubs bidding to get into the final of the League Cup. So Wigan players have all come across for a little impromptu team talk here. Cold night, but important to get the liquids on board. And the Manchester United supporters taking advantage of this lull in play to sing at the top of their voices. And their players, interesting, don't come across to talk to Eric Ten Hag, but there are many little individual discussions taking place inside the centre circle during this break in play. If you missed the FA Cup draw earlier on, Tottenham will host the holders Manchester City, those two clubs who played out a very exciting 3-3 draw last month in the Premier League. Uh, just looking at the other big name battles in the fourth round, Chelsea will face title contenders Aston Villa, that's at Stamford Bridge. League 2 Newport County or National League side Eastleigh will host the winner of this game. And Maidstone United, who are the lowest ranked club left in the FA Cup, they will visit Ipswich of the Championship and those ties will take place on the weekend of Saturday 27th of January. Ferran is still not back up at his feet, but while they are waiting to see what else might happen here, uh, Stephen Humphreys, who had started the game, he had been a doubt because of a hip injury, hobbled off against Carlisle 10 days ago. Humphreys has gone off, and on in his place is the club captain, the very experienced Josh McGuinness, Northern Ireland international forward who scored against Carlisle 2 games ago so they're bringing on McGuinness here and that will that you know it just mentioned earlier on about how Asgard was struggling in the air against Varane I think McGuinness will be able to push his weight around with a bit more conviction yeah this is exactly what I was thinking Connor I think that you asked me earlier how we're going to get back into this I think now is the time they start to turn the screw a little bit commit a few more bodies forward get the ball into the box and like you say with the presence of McGuinness inside that box he'll start bullying Varane or attempt to and, and, and Johnny Evans and see if Wigan can get some success that way we're about to get back underway Varane who has left the field will be coming back on presently we've reached the hour mark Manchester United still leading by that first half Diogo Dallo goal to nil his second goal of the season he's on the ball at the moment Dallo breaking up towards the halfway line did well to skid his way past Godo but Godo is nothing if not persistent and he battled back and he's won possession again for Wigan and a chance to come forward here for Liam Shaw they almost get to the edge of the penalty area Wigan Juan Masaka's clearance is poor and the visitors are going to get another chance here Jordan Jones crossing position on the left hand side tried to cut one in but it needed more height and McTominay was able to head it away sits up now for Thilo Asgard but he can't get any nearer to the penalty area Varane is back on by the way, Manchester United back to 11 and Garnaccio comes on the counter-attack down the other end Manchester United leading 1-0, this is live FA Cup football, the third round, the last of the third round games five live from the BBC, also available on BBC Sounds and Varane rolls the ball up to 
Kobe Mado in the midfield and his ball is cleverly left by Dallow because he knows that Rashford is in behind him edge of the penalty area now back in field to Mado shoots well could see diving out to his left Sam Tickle was at full stretch there it was powerful it was low it was creeping inside the corner from Mado as Manchester United get it back again Rashford into the penalty area tackled by Morrison out for a corner and the game which had just gone into a little bit of a lull someone has stepped on the accelerator and it's back at full pelt again yeah it's reignited again Manchester United on that occasion it was Mainu with the shot from the edge of the box it opened up for him centrally and there was no other option just to fire it into the corner it was a brilliant save from Tickle and then Rashford winning a corner which will be taken by Bruno Fernandes right footed from the far side an in swinger that's met by Asgard who heads it out of the penalty area and Dallo attempts it full in the volley and he booms it high up over the crossbar and into the Wigan fans behind the goal well having already scored in the first half you can't blame him for taking that on but it was never in danger of hitting the target there for Diogo Dallo Wigan Athletic nil, Manchester United won 62 minutes on the clock Izzy Christensen it is a rugby town Wigan isn't it yes absolutely and uh, the Wigan fans break into song inquiring what exactly that was from Diogo Dallo Ball is cleared away by Liam Morrison up towards Josh McGuinness, who's only started three games in League One this season. He's used to this, coming off the bench in the second half of games and trying to get in the mix and get in the goal. Scored for Northern Ireland as recently as uh, October, got one against San Marino. Josh McGuinness played at Northern Ireland for the Euros in 2016 in France. And he has come on to lead the line here. Sean Maloney's team need a goal. They have the best part of half an hour to get it. Andre Onana is taking his time here. He's got the ball at his feet. Edge of the penalty area, slowly creeping out. Rolls it short to Rafael Varane. Then to Johnny Evans and Manchester United are trying to take some of the sting, some of the fizz that Wigan are trying to shake into the game. Juan Bissak has it again. This is still inside the Manchester United half. Forward to Alejandro Garnacho. Back to Juan Bissak once again. Back to Rafael Varane. This is game management for Manchester United holding on to their 1-0 lead away from home in the FA Cup. Onana, who has delayed his departure, will be on his way to the Ivory Coast after the Tottenham game at the weekend. He's been given special permission to wait around for that. And if all goes to plan, his first game will be against Guinea the very following day after playing against Spurs, which will be an interesting one for him. He's got the ball at his feet, Onana. He would certainly like a clean sheet away from home here at Wigan tonight. Clips it out towards Dallow on the left-hand side, but plays it too high. And Manchester United trying to look comfortable at the back, trying to deny their opponents, but it's little things like that that just always makes you feel Wigan might have a chance. Uh, little mistakes. You took the words out of my mouth. It's exactly those little pieces and the parts of the game that just give Wigan an invitation to step on the gas and to start pressing and jump and go and put some pressure on Manchester United. And it, it does wonders for the stadium as well, the fans pick on every mistake these Manchester United players have made which have been few tonight by the way they lead 1-0 Manchester United Diogo Dallo's goal very valuable for Eric Ten Hag at the moment you can just imagine the scene in here if this was still 0-0 or if we're going to take one of those chances in the first half as McTominay shields the ball well under pressure from Adiko Mano who's absolutely peripatetic tonight. he pops up right left central he's all over the park he's rolled it in front of McTominay here to the byline right hand side back to Aaron Wan-Bissaka Manchester United now trying to inject a little bit of pace into their attack Varane low ball to Wan-Bissaka now to Meno again back to Aaron Wan-Bissaka right hand side as Manchester United come forward we can, can only sit and admire the passing here they can't get a touch at the moment that's a clever run from Garnacho if he's onside and he is into the penalty area pulls it back McTominay wide to the target did it take a deflection it did McTominay's shot, clipping a defender and out for a corner to Manchester United. That was dangerous. A brilliant little spell from Manchester United again. That run from Garnacho was so smart. Just in behind the fullback. Corner's taken quickly. Roll to Rashford. Now to the edge of the box. Dallo tees up. Bruno Fernandes who shoots across the face of goal. And again, it took a nick off someone. It's going to be a corner. Corner to Manchester United. And Bruno Fernandes will run across to the near corner flag. Manchester United's right, a few boos for the Portuguese international as he come across to place the ball here. Still just the one goal in it at the DW Stadium in Wigan 
just north of Manchester. Cross from Bruno Fernandes. Low towards the edge of the box. He was trying to tee up Dallo. It's been cut out by Charlie Hughes. Now, can he spring a counter-attack here? That's a great ball. Gotto has to be onside. He was inside his own half when he was played. Maynou's trying to get back. Gotto into the penalty area. Brilliant defending from Maynou. Puts it out for a corner. Big chance for Wigan. I just didn't know who to back in that situation, whether it was Gotto or Maynou, because they've both been exceptional. But that counter-attack from Wigan was like lightning. Set up by Bruno Fernandes, who just played a careless ball from the corner across the pitch, just inviting Wigan onto it. No time for Wigan to waste now. The corner is taken short to Godo. Step over away from Garnacho. Gets to the byline. Pulls it in. Too close to Onana, who did spill it initially, but it didn't go out for a corner. And Onana falls down onto the ball of the byline and keeps it in play. Balls it out. Overarm to Diogo Dallo on the left-hand side. The game beginning to stretch now. Wigan have got to be brave. They've got to be a little bit more expansive. And will that create opportunities for Manchester United down the other end? It's not kitchen sink time yet, nothing like that for Sean Maloney, but we're entering the final quarter of the 90 minutes now, and Varane plays it right-footed with lots of backspin up towards Hoyland, difficult one to control, but he does well off his thigh, and it comes back to his feet from Maino, and Hoyland will now break into the penalty area, right-footed shot, he was stretching under pressure from Hughes, and he couldn't get the uh, power on it, it was accurate, it was at the target, but no power from Hoyland, and Hughes, who stretched full pelt there, has hurt himself in the process, and... The referee, Anthony Taylor, just delays the restart here to check on the condition of the Wigan defender. But that's one of the first occasions in the game, you see, that Hoyland's been able to bring the ball with him into the penalty area, facing the way that his team are playing. Yeah, it's a brilliant little play from him, a little triangle between him, Maino, and, and I think it was Wan-Bissaka, just releasing Hoyland 1v1 with Hughes. And he actually opted to take it down onto his right foot and make the angle tighter for himself. Hughes does really well, actually. Yeah, it was Hughes, the captain gets across and just forces him wide but really good play from Hoyland he has looked really sharp tonight Rasmus Hoyland so Wigan Athletic trailing 1-0 at home against Manchester United in the FA Cup Wigan have already beaten Exeter of League One and they've beaten non-league York to get into this third round different calibre of opponent tonight but they're still in this Wigan as Onana comes to the edge of his penalty area to pick the ball up rolls it low to Diogo Dallo, he takes on Godo and goes around him, good work, Godo's trying to keep up but Dallo sprints away from it and now it's taken up by Bruno Fernandes to the edge of the Wigan penalty area, tried to slip it through for Hoyland, wouldn't quite work, too many defenders back there and Wigan come away with it with Thilo Asgard and he's fouled by Menu, and that's a free kick to Wigan on the edge of their own penalty area. Uh, clever from Asgard, just forcing the, the foul from Menu, who is just looking to extinguish the counter-attack from Wigan. But we're going to just right in this game, I tell you. They do really well at relieving pressure and they're comfortable pressing still. And you just can't help but think, when are they going to throw an extra body forward and really go for it? Like you say, there is a replay on the cards if they can find a goal. Sean Maloney, the Wigan coach down below us. He only ever scored one FA Cup goal in his career, but it was an important one. It was a semi-final goal. Here come his team down the left with Jordan Jones. Up against Juan Masaka. Into the penalty area, cuts it back low, but unconvincing. And Rafael Varane is able to clear it away. Nothing fancy, just puts it straight out for a throw-in. So Wigan will remain on the attack down the left-hand side. Sessegnon comes up from left back to take it this is level with the edge of the penalty area that we're going to attack Sessignon untucks his shirt gives the ball a wipe wants to get a grip on this can he propel it into the Manchester United penalty area all the visitors defenders are back here it comes from Sessignon flicked on at the front post hooked away though then by Bruno Fernandes and Rashford holds it up on the edge of his own penalty area got a shuttle sprinting in between little passes between him and Dallo Manchester United holding on to it inside their final third. 20 minutes to play, we're going to go behind. Yeah, just looking at Sean Maloney, just clapping in his te technical area, just encouraging his players not to step off the press. He keep them pushing forward and keep them on Pan Manchester United playing out from the back. Well, increasingly as the game goes on, Eric Ten Hag ever more grateful for that Delo goal in the first half. Without it, Manchester United will be sweating now. Varane gives it short to Juan Basaka. Further on to Alejandro Garnacho, who's been quieter in this second half than he was in the first period. And Juan Basaka, under pressure from Jones, rolls it back to Onana. So Manchester United, after they host Tottenham 
in the Premier League uh, next weekend, the Sunday game. It'll be Wolves away, followed by West Ham at home, and they'll hope a, a fourth-round FA Cup tie in the middle of that as well. Here is McTominay turning on the halfway line, veering out towards the left-hand side, where Rashford will take it off him and get closer to the penalty area. It tries from miles out, Rashford. That was almost 10 yards outside the penalty area when he hit that. Ricochet off a defender. Manchester United remain on the attack. Morrison's unconvincing in his attempts to clear it away. Godot leaning in in front of Dallow. Dallow was very strong. Now helped out by Kobe Maino. He's got that low centre of gravity, but Manchester United really struggling to get clean possession here. Maybe it'll fall for Rashford now. Down the left-hand side. Rashford into the penalty area. Liam Shaw, the nearest defender. Here's Bruno Fernandes. Down he goes in the box. Manchester United want a penalty, and they get a penalty. And this won't change, no VAR tonight at the DW Stadium. Bruno Fernandes goes down. He was sort of shot turning inside of the defender. And he crumpled in a heap. Immediately Wigan players ran to surround Anthony Taylor, who did pause just a second or two before he pointed. But he's given the penalty. Penalty to Manchester United and maybe a chance to make this tie safe. Izzy Christensen. Oh, I would love to see a replay and I just do not have that luxury right now. But Bruno Fernandes, from what I saw, a delightful little chop inside the 18-yard box. He just sent the Wigan player one way and chopped it. And he's obviously caught him and the referee, I did actually watch him, Anthony Taylor. He gave, he gave himself a little bit of time to make the decision and he had a fantastic view of it. Can't help but think there was contact. Well, all the VAR debates we'd be having if this was a league game. Doesn't matter here. It's a penalty, that's that. And Bruno Fernandes, who has won the spot kick, will be the player to take it. Fernandes, who scored a penalty in the FA Cup final last season, a game that Manchester United were beaten in. His most recent penalty, remember, was saved. Robert Sanchez for Chelsea in December saved a penalty from Bruno Fernandes. And here he comes, short run up, right-footed, puts the keeper the wrong way. Excellent penalty dispatched by Bruno Fernandes. And that's a big goal for Eric Ten Hag tonight. A two-goal lead. Wigan's task seems very, very difficult now. Wigan nil, Manchester United 2. We're told from those watching in the studio there was contact. It was soft, but minimal contact in the penalty area. Well, it's a penalty then. And uh, beautifully dispatched by Bruno Fernandes, who's been... He has been absolutely brilliant tonight. He takes his fair share of criticism, but he's really stepped up. He's looked really sharp moving forward, and that penalty just... Uh, Rounds off a really good performance from him. He sent the keeper tickle the wrong way. And yeah, you can't help but say Manchester United deserved a second goal. It was coming. Dallow in the first half, Fernandes in the second. Two Portuguese internationals scoring the goals for Manchester United tonight at the DW Stadium. We can still have over a quarter of an hour of normal time to play here, but 1-0 there's always the chance this will take something a bit more miraculous now but they will battle on here comes Bruno Fernandes hits it low not held on to by the goalkeeper and Sam Tickle's fortunate there skidded off his gloves trickled across the face of goal and out for a corner yeah it was an interesting technique from Bruno Fernandes coming in from the left hand side he's only got one thing in his mind and that's to pull the trigger and he's hit the ball into the ground you can see why it's uncomfortable for Sam Tickle but similar to that one in the first half, it wasn't particularly assuring from the goalkeeper. Manchester United, two goals in front. Now they have a corner to be taken by Bruno Fernandes. United have run up plenty high scores against Wigan over the years. Lots of 4-0 games, lots of 5-0 games too. Corner played in, Sessegnon gets his head on it for Wigan. Plays it out of the penalty area. Rashford will allow it to keep going because he knows that's going to be a Manchester United throw on the far side so Wigan nil, Manchester United 2 just getting to see a replay of it yeah I mean Bruno Fernandes is caught I think even if there had been VAR I don't think it would have got Wigan out of jail on that one as Bruno Fernandes going down to win the penalty and then playing it perfectly into the bottom corner I mean even if the goalkeeper went the right way which he didn't Sam Tickle went the other way, but even if he had gone the right way, that was one of those into the inside of the side netting finishes, which are extremely difficult to save. So Bruno Fernandes will be very pleased with that. 
mention the high scoring games between these clubs the last 10 meetings there have been four 4-0 four wins for Manchester United and three 5-0 wins so Eric Ten Hag will hope the hand breaks off a little bit now and he can see a few more goals Bruno Fernandes sells a dummy knowing that Rashford is behind him to collect the ball difficult for Wigan now is he in these circumstances they've got to keep running but they've not been creating the chances it might have nicked one two seems extremely fanciful now but you never know in club football of course this is Asgard winning the ball away from McTominay and now Godot swerves and cuts back at himself and pirouettes around 360 degrees and kind of got those rubber legs reminds me of Sean Wright Phillips the way he runs and bends and twists does uh, Martial Godot we can have possession here Manchester United allowing them to have it around the halfway line and even a 2-0 down they might as well go for it I mean it doesn't matter if they lose 3-4-0 here have a crack at it and McGuinness who's had no real impact since coming on as a substitute plays a pass straight out of play and that is disappointing yeah I was just thinking then the change that Sean Maloney made on the 60 minute mark was bringing on Josh McGuinness in that number nine role for Humphreys who played the first half there he, he ran his socks off pressing the Manchester United back four but he's not really been able to have an impact on the game McGuinness here comes another change Jordan Jones who's been playing on the left wing is going off and an interesting story with the man who's coming on Callum McManaman what a story it would be if he was to pop up with a goal against Manchester United he's the only member of the Wigan playing staff who was also at the club when they won the FA Cup back in 2013 he was named the official player of the match in that final against Manchester City he had scored in the fifth round the quarter-final and the semi-final that season so Callum McManaman is on in place of Jordan Jones hoping to turn back the years here and the other change for Wigan is Johnny Smith has come on and he's replaced Liam Shaw. So that's a slightly more attack-minded midfielder in place of a more defensive-minded one. Still 2-0 Manchester United lead. Here comes Marcus Rashford, breaking into the penalty area, left-hand side, good defending by Morrison, who's done well tonight. Just kept his eye on the ball, let Rashford run into him, really, and then took it away at the last moment. And as Adiko has possession on the edge of his own penalty area, Callum McManaman who's eager really eager to get involved here screaming from the left wing and it's played towards him but cut out by Aaron Wan-Bissaka Callum McManaman who went off to West Bromwich Albion Wigan got a decent bit of money for him at the time he's caught Garnacho late here Garnacho's reacted by pushing him and McManaman pushes him back again and Anthony Taylor's bringing play to a halt um, I mean it's not swinging punches or anything like that but they did square up to each other yeah I actually missed it I was following the ball but Garnacho and McManaman making his mark on the game. You could see with his body language just moments earlier, his arms were flinging up in the air. He wanted the ball off his centre back and the ball didn't arrive at him. And maybe that little bit of frustration that the ball didn't come to him has followed through into that little challenge with Garnacho. Eric Tanag just over 10 minutes away from celebrating a victory in his first game of 2024. Hoping for a new dawn, new beginning, new investment in the club of course new changes to the structure of the ownership you know we might look back in the future and see this is a real pivotal time you know that the turning point when Manchester United came back to the big time might do and if a cup run certainly would help in the circumstances here comes Rashford ball in field to Rasmus Hoyland Garnacho screaming for it on the right hand side Hoyland's taking it on himself now Garnacho Sting had gone out of the attack by the time he got it gives it back to Bruno Fernandes who's had a very good second half booze for him from the Wigan fans who thought that he dived for the penalty into the final 10 minutes now Maynou's given it away one of the few mistakes he's made tonight straight to Stephen Sessegnon twin brother of Ryan the Tottenham player both of them formerly of Fulham here comes Smith, Johnny Smith, first time he's been involved, a great run from the halfway line into the penalty area. Smith will have a shot, but it was running out of steam by the time it hit Onana. Good run, tame shot at the end of it. Yeah, we spoke about Manchester United giving Wigan invitations to attack, but Manchester United have done the same for Wigan at times during this game. Garnacho again on this right-hand side, breaking... It's a good run by Garnacho, and Hoyland has taken a few defenders out of the equation with a decoy run and here is Marcus Rashford denied by Sam Tickle Rashford tried to squeeze it in under him the goalkeeper bravely got out to smother ball still in play for Manchester United on the halfway line nine minutes of normal time to play 
As things stand, it'll be Manchester United going away to either Newport of League Two or non-league Eastleigh in the fourth round, assuming Wigan don't rouse an amazing comeback here. We will stick with it to see if Wigan have got a trick up their sleeve. At the moment, though, it is a free kick to Manchester United. It's midway inside the Wigan half. Bruno Fernandes takes it short to Marcus Rashford. Then they play it out into space on the left-hand side where Garnacho has popped up out there for the first time tonight. He gets into a shooting position and he gets a deflection on the way through on the shot. And it's out for a corner. Corner to Manchester United on the left, who lead by two goals to nil. Yeah, twice in the space of a minute. Sam Tickle has been called to make a save from that left-hand side for Manchester United. Both shots fired in at him, one by Rashford and the second by Garnacho. And United have got a corner. Bruno Fernandes standing over it. Rashford providing an option for a kick to be taken short, which Manchester United have done a few times. Here it comes, right-footed and straight into the side netting. He felt like that hardly came onto the field of play at all. He kicked it out immediately, did Bruno Fernandes. Right, change coming for the visitors. And Willy Camboala is going to get an opportunity here. Got his Premier League debut when he started against West Ham recently. And Willy Camboala is going to come on in place of the man who's called St. Manchester United on their way tonight. It is Diogo Dallo who will make way for 19-year-old Camboala to come on here. Pat on the back for Dallo from Eric Ten Hag. Wigan trying to build from deep once again they need at least two goals without reply here and they are dramatically running out of time Rashford to McTominay tries to turn away from a deco does find Garnacho shot on target but low and tame and easily saved by the goalkeeper dropping down onto one knee the clock ticks on 83 minutes expired now just look here on the stadium for the first time some Wigan fans beginning to make their way towards the exits as Martial Godot comes over the halfway line. This is McManaman on the left-hand side, number 20 on his back. Dancing, jinking, trying to create some space, but forced to retreat back to Steven Sessegnon. Wigan, 18th place in League One. This is a huge golfing class for them. Tonight up against a team that have been in the Champions League this season. Sean Clare rolls it in front of... Johnny Smith on the right wing, back to clear again, level with the edge of the penalty area, urging from Wigan fans to get it into the mix, but Wigan have been patient here. It's worked to Asgard, 12 yards or so outside the penalty area, tries to open up the angle for the shot, and he did force Onana to dive. The keeper down to his right, but it was off target and out for a goal kick. Izzy Christensen. Yeah, not a bad effort at all from Asgard. He's had his chances today. He's actually moved back into a bit more of a deeper line midfield position. He started the game higher up, but... Can't help but think the style of play for Wigan under Sean Maloney. Their first priority is to retain the ball. They like to play with the ball. And you can't help but think that for the last sort of stages of this game when they were 1-0 down, whether they'd have just changed the style and put the ball into the box, it might have given them a chance to get back into the game quicker. Approaching 10 o'clock on 5 Live, just over five minutes of normal time to play in this one. Interesting that um, the guys at Opta reckon that Sam Tickle has made more saves in this match than any goalkeeper in the third round of the FA Cup. He's certainly been busy. He spilled one or two of them. He's maybe cut away with one or two. And uh, when it comes to the goals that have been scored against it, there's not much he could have done, really. The, the Dello one, he, his, his vision was certainly impaired by those in front of him. And the other one from the penalty spot was well played by Bruno Fernandes. So nothing he could have done about those. He's probably kept this scoreline a bit more respectable from a Wigan point of view, here comes Rashford down the left wing for Manchester United left by Garnacho. McTominay tees up Bruno Fernandes too high, may have bobbles just ahead of him, he put the laces through it with the right boots thumbs up from Bruno Fernandes to the attempt to tee him up by McTominay, but it's off target and it's a goal kick to Wigan away to our right hand side, still 2-0 to Manchester United Official attendance tonight, 22,870, which is the biggest crowd they'll have had here for some time. 7,506 of those are away fans supporting Manchester United, filling that entire far side of the stadium from us. And it'll be a joyous short journey back to Manchester United for those 
Uh, back to Manchester for those fans tonight as the team come on the attack again. Rashford trying to turn in the penalty area, goes on the outside again, pulls it back and put out for a corner. It's that final product that just won't come for Marcus Rashford. Time and time again, he's getting into good positions, but be it a crosser or be it a shot, invariably it's always been blocked away at the moment. Even though it's got a corner, Eric Ten Hag is going to make a change and Palestri is going to come on for the closing stages here. Palestri on in place of Garnacho ahead of the Manchester United corner. Yeah, Rashford's got to do better with that. He's had a lot of opportunities down that left-hand side to the byline to cut it back, to fizz it across to Hoyland or to cut it back to an oncoming midfielder. He just seems to have made the wrong decision every time, but he's looked sharp nonetheless. Palestri, sorry, sorry, is he? Garnacho's been excellent, may I say. Yep. Off he goes, big cheers from the Manchester United fans, Palestri, plays in an FA Cup game for the second time in his career, played against Reading last season in round four, corner's been taken short, Raphael Varane been urged to shoot here, why not, gives it some welly, takes a deflection, Tickle tried to get across to keep it in play, but that'll go out for another corner, and this just runs down the clock for Manchester United, who are looking pretty now for a place in the fourth round they will wait to see the replay between Newport and Eastleigh but it would appear that one of those is going to be hosting Eric Ten Hag's team in the fourth round this time around corners again taken short goalkeeper came but the defender got ahead of him there when Bruno Fernandes played it into the penalty area Smith will try to come away with the ball from the back Mena who's just growing in stature all the time wins it keeps it in play tees up Palestri ball in might have been a handball from McTominay referee agrees free kick to Wigan inside their own penalty area, handballed by Scott McTominay. Oh, again, uh, Kobe Mainu just putting out the transition from, from Wigan and just setting Manchester United back up on the attack and they've looked so sharp in those moments all evening and he's been absolutely exceptional in the heart of that midfield for Manchester United this evening. Manchester United, who lost 12 games in all of last season, they've already lost 14 games this time round. Potential dodgy night for them away at Wigan Monday night in the cold but Eric Ten Hag has been able to steer the ship towards this two goal lead one goal in either half it's not been dazzling stuff from Manchester United but in cup competitions it's about getting the job done and going through to the next stage and who knows the FA Cup could become an important avenue for Ten Hag in the second half of this season Wigan have got possession near the halfway line, Marcel Godot Scored against Peterborough in early November. He's had two enormous chances in this game, Godot, that he'll be watching back the highlights of this game later and he'll be thinking, could he have steered the course of events? Cross on the right-hand side, into the penalty area. McGuinness controlling with it with back to goal, but he can't turn. He's managed to give it back out, though, to a crossing position for Johnny Smith. Ball comes in again, and Kobe Meno is back there to clear away, and then it comes off a Wigan player and out for a throw into Manchester United, and we're into the final minute of the 90 now there'll be a few to be added on for stoppages but Wigan who've got an injury problem a little delay well, Wigan player down they've given it their all they can hold their heads high Izzy it's a huge goal 54 league places is not to be sniffed at they have given it their best and you know other league one teams might have caved in by now Wigan have battled on throughout yeah they've been brilliant you know the first half they're really good to watch you can already tell the way their team plays you know the structure the organisation and the, uh, the braveness to keep playing even until the last minute, even going 2-0 down, they've still started to play and try and find overloads against Manchester United. And, you know, they've been excellent to watch. And that man down in the box, he's got, looks like he's got a bit of cramp, but Godot's been brilliant. Reminder that more cup football coming up live on Five Live tomorrow. The first of the League Cup semi-finals first leg. We will bring you Middlesbrough against Chelsea. It's an 8 o'clock start, full commentary here. We're moving into stoppages, four minutes being added on at the end of the game. On Wednesday night, we'll have the other League Cup semi-final first leg. Liverpool host Fulham at Anfield, an old Premier League semi-final there in the Carabao Cup. But you can uh, follow all that action over Tuesday, Wednesday night on Five Live and through BBC Sounds. Tonight, weekend fans have showed up at the DW. The expectancy of potential FA Cup giant killing. But Manchester United have been able to stick to their guns, take chances at key moments, wasteful on others mind you, but two goals to the good, this has not become a nervous end now from Eric Ten Hag and he can start plotting ahead of Tottenham at the weekend, Tottenham who 
are missing a lot of players as well of course have been for several months now more recent absentees who've gone off to the Asian Cup in the place of Son and the African Nations Cup with Saar and, and Basuma away as Eric Ten Hag now takes the opportunity to bring on a couple of youngsters <laughs> late on Hannibal Mebry who's well used to getting a run and a big chance here for Omari Forsen who will come on the number 62 and get a run in the FA Cup so the players coming off are Rashford Rashford who slowly walks off the parts of the field he didn't pull up many trees tonight but he's played his part and the other player departing is Rasmus Hoyland who will probably be disappointed against League One opposition that he's not got a goal on his FA Cup debut but it is Forsen and Hannibal who have come on and they're only going to get a few minutes here down on the pitch change as well for the home side and Marcel Godot who probably came as close to anyone to scoring tonight he won't be getting a goal this evening because he's departed and Callum Lang a player who's made almost 150 appearances for Wigan will come on here for the very closing stages Sean Maloney bringing on an attacker very late on hoping to catch lightning in a jar Callum Lang who has scored a famous FA Cup third round goal in his career as Manchester United win a free kick here found him Palestri in the right full back position but Callum Lang when he was an Oldham player he scored a goal to knock out Premier League Fulham it was an 88th minute winner in the FA Cup third round so he knows the match it can happen will he have enough time to do anything about it here Lang on in place of Gotto two and a half minutes already played of the stoppages 90 seconds to go Onala takes his time over the free kick maybe that's the biggest compliment Manchester United will play Wigan tonight that they have been wasting time towards the end here header by Steven Sessegnon Lang allows it to bounce up towards McGuinness running into his Northern Ireland international colleague Johnny Evans who gets the better of him then Juan Basaka nearly gave it away and uh, since Forsen's come on he's gone to right back and Juan Basaka's playing left back for Manchester United Lang gets it again mistake by McTominay this time running with four Manchester United players around him and he ends up down a cul-de-sac does Callum Lang there Manchester United can clear it away up towards Hannibal Mebry but it's taken away from him by Charlie Hughes so it'll be back to League One action for Sean Maloney and for Wigan after this they've got Northampton next weekend Reading will be the next visitors here to the DW Stadium Smith drills one into the penalty area but it's blocked by the feet of Johnny Evans on the edge of the six yard box and Charlie Hughes I think has been urged to shoot from the halfway line there by Wigan fans who are just hoping for an absolute shooting star of a miracle here right hand side Sean Clare Wigan on the attack but surely their goose is cooked that's a good ball in mind you Palestri back helping out the defence came off the back of his head awkwardly McTominay's able to shovel it away and Manchester United have a chance to clear down the other end Palestri on the right wing Veers inside now blue and white shirts looking tired as they try to fall back into defensive position Bruno Fernandes challenged by Charlie Hughes and held up Manchester United hold on to the ball Eric Ten Hag's team are almost there into the fourth round of the FA Cup it's been an entertaining cup tie tonight but no shock no giant killing Manchester United about to go through as young Omari Forsen drags it back under his studs and plays it to the right hand side also involved Camboala back into the vastly more experienced Raphael Varane there it is final whistle from Anthony Taylor Manchester United get the job done on the road we can, can hold their heads high it's only a second win in seven games for Eric Ten Hag boy did he need this and Manchester United progressing through for a tenth year in a row the third round of the FA Cup poses little problem for Eric Ten Hag is he Christensen? Yeah, very professional performance for Manchester United it did have the potential to be a banana skin but Manchester United were assured, they were sharp they looked really good going forward there were a few mistakes throughout the game where you think if this was in the Premier League they would have been punished but Wigan Athletic have put a really, really good account of themselves on tonight against a really good side that you can't help but think that if they carry on playing like that they should start to climb up the League One table.
A win that was forged on the western side of the Iberian Peninsula. Two Portuguese internationals with the goals. Diogo Dallo in the first half. Bruno Fernandes, having been fouled, stepped up to dispatch the penalty. And Manchester United have won away at Wigan in the FA Cup by two goals to nil. Uh, Connor, Izzy, thank you very much. Manchester United into the fourth round. Uh, and that means that they will play either Newport or Eastleigh of the National League away in that fourth round. So there's quite a lot on that replay now, certainly financially for Newport uh, or Eastleigh. The tie of the round, uh, which was uh, made, the draw for which was made earlier on, uh, is Tottenham at home to the holders, Manchester City. But United will go to Newport or Eastleigh in the fourth round. Reaction to that game? Uh, throughout the evening uh, and on the Football Daily podcast as well. But for the last 20 minutes of Five Live Sports,